if you're happy with, with this decimation, just hit apply. So, and, um, as I just discussed with, with Paul, once you hit apply, you don't have any access to what you did, basically. So it's applied there. Uh, you will lose the history. So I'm having, I'm having trouble knowing. So I, it was on collapse and I hit unsubdivide. Mm -hmm. And it's not responding to me. It's not even spin waiting the other cursor. So I don't know what it is doing something or not. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, these are all user interface design uh, issues, issues and questions. Cool. So, um, in the next step, we would just want to experiment with uh, some of the ex scoping tools. Um, I thought these are very useful for local um, refinement of the mesh. And um, while well, again in Agisoft you may have access to change some of those vertices, um, that might, may not be as intuitive. But also, you may not always have access to Agisoft or other software. So, um, just focus on an area that you like. Doesn't matter. Um, can do here. It's 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 very distorted. It's basically um, very damaged. But um, you just want to do the best you can. And while once you put this on Sketchfab, everyone sees your object. And so you just want to have like a decent representation. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but we want to see what we can do with this. Um, what happens with these objects? They not they normally sometimes extruded or they're just um, kind of inflated or deflated. Um, you want at this point to level them, and also if there are any holes, um, basically fix them as much as you can. But once you have these textures textures on, it's a bit more confusing. So um, I recommend uh, moving to solid mode. And you can see a better presentation of the uh, the polygons and the mesh. Um, I should note that this in Agisoft could be done much better. I asked intentionally um, Inia to to not do a lot of refinement in Agisoft. So basically, if you have a very damaged, because probably you have uh, lower number of images, and then your interpolation is not right. Um, how you can fix it here. Um, so once, if if you if you're sure that the object is selected, you can you can double check here in your outliner. Um, you can go to the object mode and use and go to the sculpt mode. So the way it works is that the same with me. I mean, I don't see any more that much detail of my polygons, but uh, so here, um, once you click on the sculpt mode on the left side on the top in your toolbar, here you have a tab called Tools. That that's where you can see all the uh, information about the sculpting. And you can click on this thumbnail to select your brush each of which does a different function, although they are all very similar, uh, but they are kind of specialized for some specific uh, operations. Um, you, can, you can start with, uh, with inflate deflate, this guy. So once you have the inflate deflate, um, there is also an option here that you can change between inflate and deflate. So if you want to press the geometry down, or you just want to pull it back in the areas that you have holes, um, that can help you do it. <coughs> so once you selected the, that, there is another option that you meet, need to make sure is right, and that's your um, brush size. So here you can see that you have um, like a fairly large brush size. You want to make it smaller or larger. Um, you can use the brackets. Um, like the, the square brackets on your keyboard to make it smaller or larger. Um, you can also use the radius function here to make it smaller or larger. Oh, cool. It would be nice to have a projected size. What is that? The projected size would be uh, 
if it gets smaller when it's all, when, when it overlaps a more distant object, it's smaller. Okay. So start playing with this with this tool to see what you can get. Um, no, each of which does a different thing. Sometimes, if, if like I say, um, and your object is like the form and it's like kind of dented inside <laughs> or um, kind of yeah. deflated inside, you just want to pull the geometry back, use the uh, de inflate the face. Sometimes there are a lot of jagged edges, you just want to flatten them and then you use a smooth or level. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it depends on what you want to do. So here I'm just pulling back those areas that, that were kind of not there. And then you can use um, the smoothing or flattening basically. Just to, f just to flatten, you can see it flattens your, your surface. Mm -hmm. You can always um, undo with Control Z. Um, you can use the smooth basically to smooth thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the algorithms. <laughs> These are very good questions. <laughs> That's what I thought like, about the, what the lecture should be about. Mm -hmm. You uh -huh. know, like, is like, the smoothing, maybe yeah. using local spine mm -hmm. fashion, flattening uh, will be probably eliminating uh, some That's that's a good question. So I it think would be good to yeah. talk because it's probably some standard um, 3D. Yeah, these are very interesting information. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> and then this uh, this is snake hook is very interesting because um, if you make it small enough, you may be you may be able to get one of those vertices and close the gaps. Close the gaps. Mm -hmm. Because once you have a gap, basically you cannot do anything with it. <laughs> you cannot no, reconstruct the gap. You cannot sculpt it because there is nothing there to basically change or, or deform. Um, that means that you probably need to do some pulling, like, like stitching. Um, so that's what the um, the stick hook works, is that it takes one of those vertices if your brush size is small enough and to close the small gaps. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's great. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> so complicated. <laughs>